guys, my name is Lily and today I want to build a solar system or let's say the heart of a solar system. Actually, uh, me and my cousin, we want to build a solar system for his homestead and we want to run at least one fridge with it or maybe two fridges, we will see. And for that, um, yeah, I've bought a couple of components. So here we have a inverter by the company Green Cell. And this is a 2000 watts inverter and it's running at 24 volts. So we want to build a 24 volt solar system because with 24 volts you don't need as thick wires as with 12 volts for example. Uh, this is the user manual and this is the inverter. So we are building a 24 volt system and that also means that you need to buy an inverter which is rated to 24 volts. And also this here is a pure sine wave inverter and this is the best for fridges and freezers because they run with AC motors and those appliances need a clean sine wave in order to work properly. Now because we are in Europe you can see European sockets here and the output is 230 volts. And then also I want to check the back here. So here we have the terminals. Now this inverter comes with 10 square millimeters of a cable. Now I have to check if this is enough for the load actually because sometimes they throw in cables which are too thin. Okay, I just checked um, the cable size and as I suspected it's a little bit too thin for my project, so I want to use 4 gauge wire. So these cables I'm going to keep for another project, but I'm not going to use it for this one. Okay, next I want to unpack the MPPT solar charge controller that I've bought for this project. It's actually one of the last that I got on Amazon right now. This device is sold out. Okay, so this here is a... MPPT solar charge controller by the company EP Ever and yeah it can deliver 40 amps which is really strong it is made from aluminium so it will give off a lot of heat and here are the specs of the solar charge controller all right so here you can see that if you use this MPPT solar charge controller with a 24 volt system that you can attach solar panels up to 1040 watts so this is the max pv input power it will give us 40 amps and then also it can put out either 12 or 24 volts okay so this is what i want to use besides the inverter here then also i want to use a negative bus bar and then i got this thermal circuit breaker with 50 amps for the solar charge controller. I also want to use this fuse holder for the main fuse. Then here I have this battery switch. With this you can turn off and on the battery. Okay, then next I want to use a buck converter. And this is rated at 20 amps. It will convert the 24 volts down to 12 volts. And with the buck converter, I want to use a fuse box for 12 volt appliances. So now I want to mount all of the components onto the board. solar charge controller and the inverter and now I want to mount this thermal circuit protector here. This has 50 amps so it's a little bit bigger than the 40 amps that this device can give us. So now the wires that go from here to here have to have at least a size that can transport 50 amps uh, but I want to go a little bit bigger so I'm going to take a 6 gauge wire 
and 6 gauge wire is about 16 square millimeters of wire here in Europe and this is what I got here. Now if you are not sure which kind of wire and thickness you need for your project then you can check out um, wire size tables like this one for example. You can find them in the internet and this will help you out when building something like this. Alright, so now for the wire I want to use these uh, copper lugs. Next I want to measure the distance from here to where it's saying battery. Okay, so now I have connected the positive terminal of the solar charge controller with the circuit breaker and from here I went to the inverter. Now from this inverter we now want to go through the main fuse. Then from here we are going to make a connection to the battery switch. Now everything that is connected from the inverter to the battery I have to use this uh, thicker cable now. This has 25 square millimeters. Now also I want to label my cable thickness so that I don't forget which size of wire I have used because actually my wire is not like there's no printing on the outside. So this is why I want to make my own label. Okay guys, so now it's time to calculate the size of the fuse that we need for our inverter here. Now this inverter is a 2000 watts inverter, but it also can surge to 4000 watts for a short period of time. Now for my project I'm not going to exceed the 2000 watts and this is why I'm calculating the fuse to the 2000 watts. Okay, so we have 2000 watts and now we divide it by 24 volts because this is our system right so we are building a 24 volt system and if you divide the watts by the volts you will get the ampere now here we have 83.33 ampere so this is the amount of uh, amperage that the inverter takes in to produce the 2000 watts but actually it's not 100% efficient so it will probably take in 10% more because usually inverters they only work at a efficiency of 90%. So now let's divide that by 90 times 100. So that's about 92 amps that we need for the inverter 
The next bigger size is 100 amps and this is also what I want to order from Amazon now and then I'm going to insert a 100 amp fuse here in this fuse holder. Now before I finally mount the switch, I first have to attach another cable which is going to lead down to the battery. So the only thing is I don't know how long this should be because I don't know which batteries I'm using yet. So I think I'm going to take a length from here to the bottom of the board. So now this side of my solar system is finished and here the only thing that is missing is a lug. Next I want to connect all of the negative wires to my bus bar here and this is then connected to the negative terminal of the battery. So yeah, I think this is a good position here so that I can easily go around this corner here without interfering too much with this device. So I have connected both the solar charge controller and the inverter to my negative bus bar. Alright, I have made one more wire and this is going to connect to here and the other end is going to connect to the battery. So now I'm done with a very simple solar system. So you could hook this up to the uh, battery now and also you can hook up some solar panels and then you would have a working system. Um, but also I want to install a switch for the solar panels as well so that if I have to do some maintenance at the system I can also switch off the solar panels and not only the battery. So now I'm going to attach another switch for the solar panels and the wires of the solar panels are going to come in here on top. So I'm going to make a switch here and then maybe also another fuse. And this will then be connected to the solar panels. And this is actually where the terminal of the solar panel is. Wow, I just had to go upstairs because I got a package from Amazon. And here are my 100 amp fuses. And also I want to switch out the screws because these ones are not as great and now I want to completely drill through these holes and then I want to use bolts instead of screws.
and this is how I have uh, recessed the holes and now this is really solid so you won't uh, rip this out. Okay, so I want to clean up my wires a little bit and I'm using these small like holding devices. Steel rubber lined hose pipe clamps. <laughs> That's the name of them. And these work great. Now the next thing that I want to add to this very simple core of a solar system is the um, DC to DC converter. Uh, this is going to convert the 24 volts to 12 volts with 20 amperes. I just noticed that the wires are not especially thick, so it's probably a good idea to not, uh, yeah, put this away too much. So I want to have this as close as possible to my system. And then also I'm going to install the fuse box here somewhere. So this here is the input with the 24 volts, plus and negative. Then here we have the output, negative and plus. So now this black wire is going to go to the negative bus bar. And the red one I will probably connect to here or here. Now for this DC to DC converter I will need my own fuse and what I have here is a fuse holder which is usually used in car manufacturing. Okay so now I want to uh, calculate what the right size of fuse is that we need for our fuse holder which is at the 24 volt side of the buck converter. So we have a buck converter with 240 watts divided by 24 volts so this is 10 amps but this buck converter is not working at a 100% efficiency so it's more like 90% and if we divide the amps by 90 and multiply it by 100 we get a 11.111 um, amps fuse but actually you size the fuse a little bit bigger than what the device needs. So now we size it up to 25% um, bigger and then we get 13.88 amps and the next bigger size of fuse is 15. So with a 15 amps fuse you should be fine. If you think that you are not using that much um, electricity from your buck converter you can also size it down to 10 amps. So yeah, I probably will use a 10 amps fuse just to make sure that the device is really protected and that we do not destroy the device. So 15 is maybe a little bit much for what we need. So I will put in a 10 amps fuse. So this is a 10 amps fuse. And if you want to insert it into the fuse holder, you just stick it in like this. Make sure it's in all the way and then you close the cap here. And I decided to attach this wire to the stud here because it's the closest and very convenient.
right guys so now here for this wire i'm still waiting for a negative bus bar a smaller one where i can attach this to and then the 12 volt system is finished now while i was working on the system i also have discovered a mistake that i've made with the 24 volt system so the mistake was that this wire here is too thin so first my thought was that I need only a wire that can handle about 40 amps, 50 amps maybe, uh, which is coming down from the solar charge controller, which is going to the circuit protector and then back to the inverter. So I thought this is the right choice. Well, it's actually completely correct for this wire here, but this one needs to be thicker. Now why does this uh, wire here need to be thicker? Well, that's because here at this start we have a connection to the battery and this wire has to transport 100 amps. So this circuit protector with the 50 amps only protects this wire here, but it does not protect this wire. So it can be that there are 100 amps on this thinner wire here and 16 square millimeters might handle 100 amps, but it will get very hot. And this is why I want to change out this small wire now with the thicker size uh, that we have here, which is 25 square millimeters. Okay, so this is the old wire. Uh, I'm going to keep it for another project. And this is the new thicker one, which is 25 square millimeters. This is actually a little bit bigger than the stud. So I want to use an extra washer for here. And I always make sure that these connections are flush. Right. Okay guys, so finally I have changed out the wire and this was really important. Okay, so now I want to tell you again what size of wire I have used for all of the components. So everything that connects to the uh, solar charge controller I have used 16 square millimeters for. Uh, this is going to go to the solar panels. This is also 16 square millimeters and the American version for these is 6 gauge. Now everything at this side which is connecting to the inverter I have used 25 square millimeters of wires and the American version of this is 4 gauge. Okay, this is also 25, 25 and 25. Now what's funny is um, this device here is rated at 20 amps but it comes with wires that are only 16 gauge thick which is 1.5 metric. So 16 gauge according to this table can only transport 10 amps but because these wires are so short it will probably be okay to transport 20 amps. And here we have prolonged the wire to insert a fuse. And this wire is um, four square millimeters, which is 12 gauge. So this can handle 25 amps easily. Now also what I want to do now is I want to install a switch for this buck converter so that in case my cousin does not want to use any 12 volt appliances so that he can switch it off because this is always going to draw some current even if you're not using um, any 12 volt appliances. So this thing will get hot. And yeah, this is why I want to install a switch now. Okay, I have just found the switch in my basement and it's perfect for this project. So what I quickly made is this stand here where I can screw in the switch. And finally, my small post arrived, which I want to use for the negative side of the 12 volt system.
All right, so now on the positive wire, you can attach another fuse if you want. It depends on what batteries that you are using. So if you have normal HEM batteries, which are made from lead and chill, then you can attach a fuse, in my case, which should be 125 amperes. So uh, 100 amps would be a little bit too small because 100 amps is what I have used for the inverter, but also we now have connected this um, converter. So this one would be too small if we pull 2000 watts here and 240 watts here. Or I can directly uh, connect this cable to a LiPo battery with a built-in circuit protection. So it really depends on what batteries you get, but um, yeah, if you want to be extra safe, then you can always bolt on a fuse like this one here. Now here I have this display here, which is a MT50 monitor. And with this you can program the MPPT solar charge controller. And also you can um, take a look and monitor how your solar panels are doing. And up here I'm going to use a couple of fuses. So these here are MC4 inline fuses that you can directly attach to the solar panels. And yeah, these are pretty awesome. So if your solar panel is faulty, for example, because it gets damaged or something, then this will uh, protect the solar panels from blowing up into a fire. So these inline fuses come in really handy. Also, I would like to say that um, we will have a electrician coming to us and take a look at the system before we actually use it the first time. And yeah, I just want to have a professional look over my work here. And this is very important because you can actually make a lot of mistakes when building solar systems like this. And it only needs like one false connection, a lock which does not fit properly or a wire that is too thin and you will burn down your house. So make sure that you always consult an electrician when you're building something like this. Okay, last but not least, I would like to recommend um, one person. This is um, the person that I learned everything that I know about solar systems from. So I'm talking about Will Prowse and he has written this book and also he has a really awesome YouTube channel where he is explaining all of those things that I told you about today. So this is a really awesome book that I can highly recommend. So if you read this, you can definitely build a simple solar system like this yourself. And also I highly recommend his YouTube channel. And this is where you have even more in-depth um, explanations of how solar system works. So check out Will, he's great, he's awesome. I like him a lot. And I will put a link to his channel and to this book into the description below. Okay guys, it's another day and look what I got in the mail today. I got a couple of these 125 amps fuses. It's a little bit bigger than the 100 amps fuse that I've used up here at the main fuse holder. Yeah, and today I want to bolt this onto the lock of the positive wire. But first we have to check if this wire is really strong enough to handle 125 amps. Because if you have a wire which is too thin and which can handle less amps than the fuse itself, then the wire will burn first before the fuse trips. Now for my project, I have been using the metric version of wires and this here is 25 square millimeters, which is slightly bigger than four gauge, okay? And now let's check how much amps the 25 square millimeter cable can handle. So if we take a look at this German chart, we can see that 25 square millimeter of a cable, which has only like one strand, it can carry 129 amps. So that's uh, more than 125. And this is why I can use the 125 fuse on this wire here. And if you have the American system, the uh, AWG system, then you will need at least a two gauge wire. This can carry 120 amps. 
or even a thicker wire. Okay, now I want to bolt on this fuse directly to the wire and I want to make sure that this rubber here is not touching the metal. So this should not come in between the two metals here, otherwise you have a bad connection. So for this I just take this um, bolt and a washer. At the other side I'm going to attach another washer. Then I'm using a split ring. And this is a nut. Okay, so this is how you can bolt on a fuse onto a lug and it's pretty easy. The only thing that is missing now is some kind of shrink tube which goes over everything here and then you can connect this to your battery. Um, so you don't necessarily need a main fuse holder but of course a fuse holder like this one here is very convenient because you can easily uh, switch out the fuses without having to cut off the uh, shrink tube every time. But still, this is how you do it if you connect a fuse directly to a battery. Okay, next I want to install this hook here at the board and this is where I'm going to hang um, a couple of extra fuses so that my cousin has them at hand when he needs them. Alright, next I want to install a shunt at the end of the negative cable and I got a really cheap one on Amazon and also I had this battery monitor lying at home. Yeah, this is pretty cheap actually, it cost like 10 euros or so and I thought why not use it on this project because then also we can directly monitor the battery, how much amperage that is used and how many watt hours and yeah also it says um, what the voltage of the battery is. Now here at the back side you can see that this battery monitor is also rated at 100 amps and here you have a detailed um, description on how you have to attach all of the cables to the shunt and to the battery. So this will be connected to the negative lead of the battery and then we have to run a couple of smaller wires to the shunt here. So yeah, I just don't want to wire this in yet because I don't know if this is going to stay somewhere here or maybe outside of the um, cupboard that we are going to use. So I will install this once we are at the actual site. Okay, so finally my new crimping tool arrived and this tool can be used to crimp uh, some special... It's not a connection, but it's like a case which goes around the wire so that all of the strands are kept together. Okay, so here's a close-up of what the crimping tool is doing. So you can see that all of the small wires are kept together with this case. And this way it's much nicer to stick into here. So these casings are perfect for, you know, uh, keeping everything neat together. And with this you can uh, avoid some accidental shorts. Perfect. Yeah guys, so this is my 24 volt system and uh, I think we have done everything to make it super safe. But also I would like to state that if something is going wrong here, no matter what, let's say it's a very peculiar error and um, let's say our fuses are not working. In that case there are fuses built in into both of these devices. So we have some fuses in here and also some fuses in the 
uh, solar charge controller. Um, it's a little bit inconvenient to get to them because you would have to open up the inverter and the uh, solar charge controller. But in this rare case where something happens and where the fuses are not protecting our system, then we have a backup um, in those devices. And it's always good to have redundancies. All right, and then last but not least, I also have printed out a warning that you first have to switch on the battery. So um, in case my cousin is going to do some maintenance, that he's going to be reminded that first the batteries need to be switched on before he switches on the solar panels. And yeah, this is really important. Otherwise you can fry your solar charge controller. I think this is pretty much it for today. And, and if you want to see how we install this 24 volt solar system at my cousin's homestead, then make sure that you are subscribing to my channel. Thank you for watching guys and stay tuned till next time.